An incredible treasure discovery can happen anywhere, at any time. There might be one to be found buried at the bottom of your garden. Perhaps there's an overlooked treasure hiding in your local thrift store or at the bottom of the nearest river or lake. You don't have to be an archaeologist to find treasure. Anyone can do it. And they do it all the time. Here's a handy video roundup of all the most incredible treasures found recently. Owning a metal detector is a virtual necessity if you're an amateur treasure hunter. Time and again, they've proven to be invaluable tools when it comes to finding lost treasure. Such as this utterly unique Bronze Age gold ring that was found in a field in Cumbria, England in October 2019. The artifact was found by a man named Billy Vaughn, a relative newcomer to the hobby who'd owned his metal detector for only six months before he literally struck gold. He had already found a few old coins on the day he found this ring, but after getting a very strong positive signal from his device, he dug down around six inches into the ground and found the ancient object waiting for him. Billy immediately got in touch with professional archaeologists, who confirmed that his discovery is 22 carats solid gold and around 3,800 years old. Perhaps more significantly than that, it's the first complete Bronze Age penannular ring ever found in the country. Artifacts like this have been found before, but only broken ones. The value of the gold alone is around $15,000, but its historical importance means its true value is likely far higher. As we're on the topic of ancient British discoveries, let's talk about this Viking Age arm ring. It's part of the famous Galloway Hoard, a large collection of Viking artifacts found in the Galloway region of Scotland in 2014. The collection has been studied extensively in the years since its discovery, and in October 2019, researchers made a new breakthrough. By translating a series of Viking runes etched into an armband, it's been possible to identify its original owner as a man named Egbert. He might even have been the owner of the entire hoard, which was buried deliberately some 1100 years ago. As odd as it might sound to our modern ears, Egbert was a reasonably common name in Anglo-Saxon England. What's odd is the fact that we have an Anglo-Saxon name scratched in Anglo-Saxon runes on an artifact that's undoubtedly Viking in both design and origin. That indicates that either the arm ring or the whole hoard might have been won from Vikings in battle or traded with Vikings after they arrived on the British Isles. There are still some historians who believe the Viking conquest of England might have been less bloody than it's often thought to have been, and this discovery might support their cause. Ancient Roman jewelry of all kinds is usually a valuable thing to find for a treasure hunter, but there's something extra special about this beautiful sapphire ring. The sky blue ring made from a single piece of sapphire is 2,000 years old and almost certainly belonged to the famous Roman Emperor Caligula. The piece features the face of a woman etched into its bezel, and historians believe it's the face of Saesonia, Caligula's fourth wife. Legend has it that Caligula thought her so beautiful that he regularly paraded her naked in front of his troops. The circumstances of the ring's discovery are unknown, but it made its world debut at an exclusive exhibition of Roman jewelry in London in late 2019. Because of the quality of the craftsmanship and the precious nature of the stone, it would be valuable even if it didn't have any historical connection. But because of its apparent provenance, it's been given an estimated value of $750,000. If it were ever to be sold, it's highly likely that the price would go far higher than that. Rings made from a single piece like this are known as horoliths, and this might well be the greatest example of its kind in the world. Fighting the Second World War was enormously expensive for Great Britain, and so the country called upon resources from abroad to support its far efforts. Some would say it even overstepped the mark in doing so. In early 1941, Winston Churchill ordered $200 million worth of silver to be brought back to the country from India, which back then was under British control. 
The silver was loaded onto a vessel called the SS Garsopa, but it never quite made it back to England. The Garsopa was attacked by a German U-boat and sank off the coast of Ireland, not far from Galway. That was the last anyone saw of it until 2011, when the broken wreck of the vessel was finally found. It was damaged so badly in the sinking incident that it had split wide open, spilling its silver cargo across the seabed. Retrieving the silver was always likely to be difficult because the wreck sits so deep below the surface. So far, 56 tons have been brought back to dry land. There's still far more to be found, so this deep sea salvage operation is likely to continue for some time yet. When the Romans left Britain in the 4th century, the country's entire monetary system collapsed. Rather than conventional currency, the natives began to use a replacement form of bullion called hack silver, made from pieces of broken plates, silverware, and tableware. Hack silver collections don't turn up in the country often, but one was found in Shropshire in September 2019. It's just the sixth confirmed hack silver discovery in the country's history. This is a large collection of hack silver, seemingly buried on purpose during the Dark Ages, and has become known as the Wem Hoard. Among all the buckles, brooches, and vessels, there are also a few coins minted during the final months of the Roman occupation of Britain. The discovery was made by metal detectorists Steve Lord, Andy Bistrobosh, and Steve King, all of whom were singled out for praise by Peter Reval of the British Museum. Were it not for the efforts of this intrepid trio of treasure hunters, there would be no known artifacts from this period of Shropshire's history at all. Long before the human race moved on to living in houses and apartments, we lived in caves. That makes caves a great place to go looking for ancient treasure. Apparently, the Baradla cave system in Hungary is a particularly good bet because that's where this collection of Bronze Age treasures was found in mid-2019. A team of archaeologists working within the cave system found jewelry, pottery shards, and ornaments made from bronze. But that was only the start of the story. They also found animal bones that show signs of butchery, perhaps connected to some kind of sacrificial ritual, and human skeletons. By the time they were done digging, they'd found an impressive 59 items, all of which are believed to be 5,000 years old. That's despite the fact that this 20-mile-long cave system has been extensively explored by many archaeologists in the past. The most puzzling discovery was a cluster of polished rocks close to the animal bones. The best guess of the experts is that the stones were used in an ancient healing ritual. The sauna-like heat of the humid caves has long been said to give them mystic healing qualities. So perhaps the two things are connected. We're heading back to England again, and this time it's for a massive collection of Roman coins. In fact, archaeologists say that this is the largest Roman coin collection ever discovered on the British Isles. The vast haul of over 3,000 copper coins was located by a pair of amateur metal detectorists close to Rossby in Lincolnshire in summer of 2017. All of the coins were minted during the 4th century and appear to have been buried not long after that, perhaps as part of a dedication or commemoration ceremony of some kind. Coins were sometimes also used in votive offerings, but burying a coin collection of this size for that purpose would be almost unthinkable. Whatever the purpose was, the placement of the coins was very deliberate. They were all stored inside a large ceramic pot, which was, in turn, buried inside an even larger oval pit, which was likely dug for that very purpose. One possible explanation is that Constantine was declared emperor in York in the year 306, so this might have been a way of honoring him. The total value of the coins is said to run into tens of thousands of dollars. The Aztecs of ancient Mexico are notable for their enthusiasm about human sacrifice, but their sacrificial rites weren't reserved for humans. They also sacrificed a variety of different animals to appease their gods, including wolves. Despite the sudden and violent way their lives ended, 
Sacrificial animals were often treated with great respect when the time came to bury them, as we can see here with the burial of this sacrificial wolf. It was found in downtown Mexico City in July 2017, adorned with some of the most spectacular and valuable examples of Aztec gold work ever discovered. The wolf went to its grave with no fewer than 22 gold adornments, including a nose ring, pendants, a full chest plate, and leg bracelets. Amazingly, the discovery was made inside a stone box that was almost hiding in plain sight close to the Zocalo Square of Mexico's busiest city. Aside from the gold, the wolf was dressed in a belt made from shells and then placed on a layer of flint knives. It's likely that the knives were used in the animal sacrifice, which makes the contents of the box a complete record of the event. An artifact or collection of artifacts doesn't have to be made of gold or silver in order to be valuable. It just has to be significant. That's the word we'd use to describe this photographic discovery from February 2021. David J. Whitcomb owns a law office in New York City, USA, and bought new premises for his company in December 2020. He had no idea that his new building had an attic, so naturally, he climbed up into it to explore it not long after the purchase was completed. It seems the realtors that dealt with the transaction had missed the attic too. David was shocked to find the secret room stuffed full of picture frames, photography equipment, stacks of photographs, and glass negatives going back more than 100 years. He figured that he might have found something valuable, and so he contacted an expert. That's when the most significant photo in the collection was identified. A picture of suffragette leader Susan B. Anthony, taken just one year prior to her death in 1906. Portraits of fellow suffragettes Elizabeth Smith Miller and Elizabeth Cady Stanton have also been identified. All of the pictures appear to have been taken by famed photographer James Hale, but how they came to be in the attic of this building is unknown. Treasure hunters in the British Isles must have been working extra hard in recent years, because here's yet another valuable discovery from the United Kingdom. It's four Iron Age gold torques that were found by a pair of amateur metal detectorists in a field in Leakfrith, Staffordshire in February 2017. If the professional archaeologists who've since had the opportunity to assess the find are right about the discovery, the torques are the oldest example of Iron Age gold ever found in the UK. Three of the torques are necklaces, with the fourth thought to be a bracelet. While it might be the oldest Iron Age gold discovery in Britain, the torques aren't actually British. An analysis of the design and composition of the artifacts suggests that they're from either France or Germany. The decoration on the bracelet, however, with its loops and lines, is undeniably Celtic. All four items are thought to be around 2,400 years old, and probably belonged to extremely powerful or wealthy women. The discovery was officially classified as treasure, and has since been acquired by a museum in Stoke-on-Trent. What makes for a better treasure discovery? Four small torques, or one absolutely huge one? Check out this treasure find and decide for yourself. The whopper of a torque was found in Cambridgeshire, England in late 2016. From a technical point of view, it should be described as a four-flange spiral twisted bar torque, and it's around 3,300 years old. If you straightened it out and stood it upright, it would be 4 feet and 10 inches tall. It's also unusually high in gold content, made of around 87% gold, 12% silver, and a pinch of copper. Most torques were worn around the neck or the arm, but that obviously can't be the case with this one unless it was worn by an elephant. The truth is that we have no idea how or where giant torques like this were used. Unlike smaller torques, which often turn up still attached to the remains of the occupants of ancient tombs, big torques like these don't seem to have been buried with the dead. They would have taken a long time to make, so they must have had a specific purpose. But the secret of that purpose remains with our Bronze Age ancestors, 
and they're not talking. Coin discoveries are common, and because of that, they're often also dull. That isn't the case with this coin discovery. It's one of five long-lost coins that were seized by the British from treasure-laden Spanish ships in 1702, and it turned up in the toy chest of a four-year-old boy in November 2016. The coin, known as a Queen Anne Vigo five-guinea piece, is 319 years old. The boy's father believes his own father, the boy's grandpa, may have given it to him as a keepsake when he was young. He has no idea how it might have come into the family in the first place. Historians say that it was the first British coin ever to be stamped with the name of the battle it was won in. Back when they were struck with gold, they were intended as a distraction from the fact that the British had failed to capture the port of Cadiz. This coin would have been a collector's item even when it was brand new, but when it went to auction in 2017, it surpassed all expectations by fetching a price of just over $300,000. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!